Hey guys. So I have promised you guys a colored pencil tutorial on how I use colored pencils, so I'm just gonna get right into it. Um, but I'm gonna put this down first over the wool that I prepared for this, because I'm going to show you which or er, colors I'm gonna use and the kind of method I'm gonna use. Alright, so I use Crayola colored pencils because I can't really afford better ones. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the darkest well, this is just my way of coloring. I'm not saying it's the right way. <laughs> I'm just saying this is just how I do it. So I take the darkest color, like in the darkest area. Okay, gotta make this bigger so you guys can see it. The darkest area of the drawing where you want it to be shaded, you take this dark color, right? And you press really hard when you start in that darkest area, but then you gradually get lighter. It's like a gradient, I suppose. And then you're gonna take your next darkest color, and you're gonna start right where you did before, press really hard, it's like you're going over it, up until you get to this area where you started fading it. Then you start fading this one, slowly after. And you just keep doing that, with the colors on the drawing. So I just wanted to quickly explain that. And now I'm going to actually do this. Alright. So I drew a wolf because that's usually what I'm known for here <laughs> so far. So yeah. Alright, so start with the darkest color. And I'm not talking about black, because if you put black, um, usually I just go back in with the black later. And this is my OC uh, Yukio, by the way. So. Yes. Alright, and right here I guess I can throw in a bit of how I color their little fluff mane thing, because I know a lot of people have been asking me about that. So I start with the dark color, and I just... I'm not even sure how to explain this properly, but I do these kind of triangular shapes, I suppose, um, to make it look kind of feathery or fluffy, rather. And I put these in the darkest areas of where these um, tufts of fur would go. And honestly, I just guess. <laughs> so there's that. But this is just a quick tutorial on how I do this. So I guess I can throw this into it as well. Because it's part of the coloring. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I say uh, a lot in my videos. Um, there we go. Deal with it. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. So... I'm planning a how to draw a wolf, like the body and everything tutorial as well, but that will happen when I have time, because I know that's a highly requested one on Page World, Pagey World, yeah, I always mess that up, but a lot of my followers on there have requested me to do that. So I do plan on it, um, so yeah, I will get to that as soon as I can. Alright, and I usually end this main, I guess I'm just going to call it a main because I honestly don't know um, what I would describe that as, <laughs> but yeah, just end it right here. And this video is lagging. Perfect. But <laughs> yeah, so I do the main and then I do a little bit of the fluffy stuff on the stomach area and on the tail. Um, the outer part of the tail and the butt fluff, <laughs> I guess that's one way to put it. So yeah, I just always start with the dark color.
Alright, now here I'm starting to add the shading in for where some of the shadows would be. Remember to start really dark if you're wanting to use this method, <laughs> which I assume you are because you're watching this video, but you know, could be wrong. Alright, and for this main part, I go over the darker markings, the fur tufts, I suppose I could call them, but I make sure that you can see the um, lighter color, but not completely cover up the white spots because you're going to fill that in with the main color that you're using for the body, and that way this will give it some depth. And don't be afraid to press hard, but if you're not comfortable doing that because you're afraid you're going to ruin the drawing, start off light and if you think that it needs more pigment or more color, then gradually start pressing harder. I'm just a little bit more comfortable with it because I've colored this way for a while now, but I understand if you are not comfortable, so I thought I'd mention that. Alright, and finally, I'm going to use the lightest color that's the base. I know I don't use very many layers of colors, but for this particular OC, he really doesn't need it. <laughs> so what I go, I do here is I um, go in with the lightest color. I do go over the darker parts as well. I'm pressing pretty hard. And, uh, but for the body area, I don't press very hard. Just when I'm going over the darker colors because Crayola colored pencils are notorious for their kind of poor ability to blend. I use circular motion when I'm coloring and that helps them blend. I mean, it's not perfect, but I definitely can live with that. <laughs> I leave some white spaces under the eye and above the eye right there because he has some white markings there or well lighter I suppose lighter markings than his fur color so yeah I'm going to speed this up now again I'm sorry a lot of this is in time lapse but if I put it all into one big video the video would be so long And honestly guys, if you mess up, don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. Like I know sometimes it's frustrating if you can't get a drawing right and you're just like, I want to give up, this doesn't look the way I want it to, but even I mess up sometimes, like I, Crayola colored pencils aren't the best for blending with, so there are some lines on here where you can see that I maybe wasn't doing the greatest, but thought that since I promised that I would put this out here, this is how I do this when I use Crayola colored pencils. 
and I want people to know that you don't need a bunch of fancy art supplies to do um, artwork. I mean, yeah, it definitely does help, but <laughs> it's not impossible to do artwork that you like if you don't have that. Alright, now I'm going in with some white to blend further into the mane and such. Now onto the eyes. Alright, so for this, since the eyes in this picture are quite small, I'm just going to use two colors for this because he has yellow eyes, golden eyes. I'm going to use a brown for the darker part where I'm going to outline the pupil. I know using brown for gold eyes might not make sense, but it's just adding that um, low light in there. And I, my uh, white jelly roll pen isn't working right now, so I have to leave room for the white highlight in there too. I'm going to go back in there with the inking pen for the pupil, which I forgot to pick up an inking pen, so now I have to go grab one. There we go. There. Now, for the nose, I'm going to use a gray. Well, it's interesting how I shade the nose, actually. I use a dark gray, which I have to find now, I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. I use a dark gray for the, well, a light gray for the base color. I go back in with a darker gray and start shading in the parts where I want it to be darker slash black. And then I go in with the black. And I use this gradient technique where I press hard and then I slowly release the pressure into the other color. That highlight on the nose. So that's how I do that. So I start with pink. And go pretty light for this because you don't want them to be really vibrant pink. Alright now to add a little kind of dustier effect to this. I go in with a purple and kind of cloud like hmm, make it a little bit cloudier I guess. It's kind of a bad term. I don't really know how to explain it. I just don't want it to look as vibrant. Finally, I go in with this color called Toop or Taup. I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. Oh well. To further make the paws a little bit darker. Now I use the same color that I was using for the final color. Wow, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, but on the paws for adding the little color of the claws. And then we will be done. So the way I color is actually really quite simple. And yeah.